All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back. Today we are doing Linux networking number three. And we've done, you know, we talked about some of the file formats, JSON, XML, and YAML. And then we did a little bit on the host side, right? And we did IP as the command, not the address. And today we're going to see what we do with a server. And we're going to use that YAML configuration file. Now, as just a reminder of where we are, currently the demo is going to be on a Linux Ubuntu or Ubuntu Linux server uh, distro. And that VM is sitting on, of course, my hypervisor and the hypervisor's network connection is a NATed connection. So we'll be working with the 10 net and the default address that comes from the hypervisor Right, the DHCP pool is 10.02.15, and we're going to change it to something else. And so remember that the goal here is to use that YAML config. So we're going to edit the YAML config file and then use NetPlan to activate that file. And then along the way, we want to add to our toolbox. So we're going to, I'll talk just a little bit about some of the things that we'll use in the process, but also we'll add a little bit to your toolbox with some additional commands. I know that I just recently started using them myself, but they're very, very handy and, and sort of important to use when you're looking at your config, but we'll do that. And then the last thing that I wanted to ask you about is, can somebody let me know in the comments or uh, on a message, what, uh, what good fonts and colors you see or you would like to see as the commands? Because I'm just sort of choosing either white or green but I don't know what actually comes through the best based on how you're looking at the videos. So here are our commands that we're going to use. Now I will show you all of these when we're doing the, uh, the demo. The first one is going to be L show, and that's just our, our list of our hardware. And so we'll see uh, that it can do a lot of things. We'll also take a quick look at the man page, uh, but we're going to use it for networking. But of course you can use it for a lot of stuff to look at your own own hardware. So very, very nice. And then we've got ETH tool, and we're gonna query the network driver and hardware settings using that. And as an example, here's the, the ETH tool command. Now, it also turns out that you can use ETH tool to monitor your interface. So that's actually way cool, right? You can capture stuff or see what's happening. Now you can also use something like TCP dump, but depends on what commands you wanna use and whether or not you want to be active on the connection. And also remember that previously we set the IP address using the IP command, right? So we did something like IP address add, and then we bring the link up or down. But that's temporary, doesn't necessarily stay with a boot unless you use a script of some kind. And so we're going to do something that's a little bit more permanent, and that is the whole point of the YAML configuration a file. Now NetPlan is the what's called the YAML network configuration abstraction. And all that that means is that it gives you an interface that controls something else so that you don't have to get into the nitty gritty. And of course the easy command there will be sudo NetPlan apply. Now here is the example of the config file that I'm going to build. And we will... Uh, We'll go through all the steps, So, I, and maybe what I'll do is we'll start really, really from scratch. So the default file that's there is 50-cloud-init.yaml. So that was there without me doing anything. And what I'm going to do is copy that whole thing over, and then we're going to edit it. So we'll take a look at all of that. And really, all that I want to do is initially, right now anyway, is... Uh, just add an IP address, and we'll probably use 99, so it's really obvious that we're doing this. So the address line we're going to add here, and then we're going to add a routes line, and that'll just be our, our default route. And then we'll apply the config using NetPlan. And then we'll also see that there is some persistence here, and so uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But that's really the steps that we're going to use. Uh, so let's do this. We should do this on the VM. Here is our Ubuntu server VM, and we'll do this all from scratch, and we'll take a look at a couple of uh, you know useful pieces of information along the way. Okay, so let me get logged in here. 
There we go. Now again, uh, let me know if this font and this color is okay. Now you can see that I was fooling around with this earlier. We can see up here that if you look right above there, you can see the 2.15 and the 2.100. We'll talk a little bit about that. But I'm going to change away from, from both of those. And so let's take a look at where these files reside. <laughs> I can't, apparently I can't type. Okay, so here we are in, there's a PWD for that. We're in ETC NetPlan. And if I just do an LS here, we can see that there's the default configuration that came along with uh, this particular ISO. So this is just an ISO that I brought down, right? The server ISO. You can see that I'm working on the command line and this was the default config. Now, if we take a look at that, you can see there's not much in there. And we'll talk about this text here uh, when we when we move it over, but all that all that's going on right now is that this particular VM is doing DHCP for everything. And so my hypervisor via DHCP is providing everything for this particular machine. Okay, so I am going to copy that file over to the desired file, right? So this will be 99... Config.yaml. Okay, so now we take a look here. Now I'm going to leave the 50 cloud there. And we will now edit the 99. All right, so now let's take a look at what's here. Now you can see the 50 cloud file was generated automatically. And so after all this is said and done, what we could do is disable that the use of that file. So we would create another file and then add lines to that. Now we're going to step around that a little bit today, but you don't have to use that file and you can disable that by startup and only pay attention to your network config file. All right, so that's what we're, we're going to edit this, but uh, let me go back and talk about those other tools. All right, now the first tool that I mentioned was the L show. I'd probably get away with, uh... oh, let's do this first. We'll do man L show. Okay, so here is the man page for uh, L show. And now the you can obviously do this online as well. And what we're gonna take advantage of is some of the information for the, the device itself. But if we, take a look down here a little bit it is the detailed information regarding any hardware today we're obviously specific to the network stuff but it, it certainly doesn't have to be so that's L show let's let's run a quick command here and we're going to be our class will be network so we'll see what that looks like now it takes just a second because it's going out and making the query move this up a little bit and you can see that I'm you know an Ethernet interface let's see what, what else we got here you can see the name the MAC address the speed uh, and then the speed of the network interface itself and so there we go capabilities of your your network config so if you were actually running a server and you were trying to do things like split the load or trying to do some I don't know even wake on LAN kind of things you can determine whether or not your NIC can can do that now let's change this a little bit. I don't know, I'll just wing it here. We'll do CPU maybe. And you can see the massive CPU that's been assigned here. There we go. Intel Core i7 on this particular machine with a 2.6 gigahertz clock. There you go. So you can actually use L Show way outside of, of what we're doing. Now the other thing I was going to show you was the ETH tool. So we'll take a quick look at the man page for that. And there we go, query, control, the network driver, or hardware settings. So pretty straightforward. There's a lot of things that you can do here. Um, this is actually how I looked up the, the monitor capability. So there you go, lots of stuff to do with ETH tool. And we're going to use it to just take a quick look at our network. So ENP, right, the weird 
naming convention here. I'm used to ETH or even EN. Well, there we go. So here is another way to look at the capabilities of your network interface. It's a little different set of information, a little different organization of the, of the detail. So the tool is focused maybe on something a little bit different. And lastly, we'll take a look at uh, NetPlan. There we go, the YAML network configuration abstraction. So there we go. Uh, so there's some details on the history. You can take a look at that and then some some example stuff. Okay, let's go back and edit uh, the YAML file now. I will leave this on the screen for just a second, but you can see the what's in the automatically generated file all by itself. Now, for the 99 config, I could just delete all of that stuff up top, all of the, the boilerplate here. So what I'm going to do is for my ENP0S3 interface, really all that I want to do is add an address right now. So I'm going to delete, and we'll just backspace over this. So what do I need? I need an address. Now there's a clear syntax here, and it makes a difference. I'm going to make some mistakes on purpose, and you'll see the color change. Because if you try to run it without the right spacing and everything else, it'll bomb out on you. And I'll, I'll, I'll mind out. We'll show you how that, that works, too. All right, so I'm going to say I want some addresses here, colon. Now, if I leave the uh, – I'm, I'm not going to do the space. So if you do – if you just say, well, how about um, – do it was 200, it was 100 before, right? So we'll do 99. We'll do like this. Now I'm just going to save this. Right? And I'm going to try to apply this config using NetPlan. And it says, ah, I don't like your, your syntax. Okay. So what I'm going to do is come back in here and I'm going to say, oh, right. I didn't do, I didn't do my proper proper spacing. But the other thing that's important here is that we probably ought to tell the system what network we're on, okay? And then we're gonna add our routes. So notice that the, the routes is in white here, and then the minute I, I'm gonna add the colon, it's very handy that there's a color change there. And then I'm gonna say two, now I'm gonna add two lines here. So again, the color change, very, very handy. And what kind of route is this going to be? Well, this is going to be my default route or my gateway. And take a look how the, the tabbing and the indentation works too automatically. That's really, really important. Now we need the via line because this is going to be my, my default gateway. All right, there we go. So see, we've got some very particular text here and we'll assume that I don't have any syntax errors here. So we'll save this. But NetPlan will tell me if I screwed this up. All right, looks pretty good. So now if I do IPA, I guess I should have showed you that before. So here we've got two addresses associated with this particular interface. Now, why is that? Well, that's because we got two config files here, and so my this machine is trying to get a DHCP address and a static address, and there's so there's also a little persistence. Now, what I can do is use our friend IP here, and so we'll just do, whoops, do this. Say sudo IP link, and I'm just going to bring this uh, bring the interface down and then back up. Did that right there we go now if i take a look at the config again oops i forgot to bring it up <laughs> there we go okay we can see that i'm down to the 99 only so that that would be one way you're to fix it if you are uh, just fooling around and trying to get a handle on how to do this uh, like i am now the nice thing is that if i reboot right now this address is persistent because I've got a config file there. 
uh, that is read by NetPlan. And if I was to do capturing or if I was to do capture right now, I would see that the address used for that is 99. But of course, to complete this, what you would do is get rid of the other configuration file or at least have another configuration file that says don't read that one. But there we go. That is how we would do that. So that is the L show, the net tool or the ETH tool, and then the, uh, the net plan. So those are our three tools that we use for that. There you go. So these were the final thoughts that uh, I wanted to express here and make sure that we caught them. And I, I talked about this a minute ago, right? Does the address persist on, on reboot? It does. When you reboot the VM, the 99 address that I was just using is there because the config file is there. But of course, the other one is there as well. But the traffic does come from the manually configured address. But of course, what you would do really is get rid of the, the entirety of the, the config. You would either uh, eliminate the auto generation of that or just simply say don't read that don't read that file so you disable the old config we did three tools today one was the l show which you now know can be used for lots and lots of things beyond just the network stuff there's the network specific stuff the eth tool and then of course net plan that we're going to use as our abstraction to read the file hey like and subscribe if you picked up some ideas or skills here today and no matter what you put in that YAML config file, may those packets always reach their destinations.